You're Polish, yes? Yeah. And you are in education? Well, I'm a secondary school teacher. I teach English. And the students are between, let's say, 15 and 19 years old. Can I ask about, um, you're a teacher in, in secondary school in Poland. What kind of mm-hmm. teacher training do, do teachers get? Or what is on offer um, regarding things like dyslexia or neurodiversity? Um, it changed. It changes constantly. Thank God. <laughs> because when I was at university, I was not taught um, much about dyslexia. Um, but it was some years ago. <laughs> Surely <laughs> <Obviously>. not. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, um, uh, teachers are offered courses on dyslexia. But what we do, um, like the, the older teachers, we try to find some courses for ourselves. Mm-hmm. That's why I think um, the problem with dyslexia is that it all depends on the person involved in the process because some people want to learn something want to to know much about it they enroll on different courses they they try to get as much knowledge as possible and there are such people who like feel that it's not necessary they kind of i i know teachers who don't believe in dyslexia although they are obliged in a way to like treat such students in a certain way mm-hmm. there are some rules regulations ah. but still yeah you know so there's a friction between what the teacher thinks and what the school demands yeah i will give you an example of my nephew if you don't mind Please. he's got he's got those central auditory um mm, processing, processing disorder. disorder yeah 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 yeah, yeah. So his pro- his problem is that um, he cannot uh, like work um, well in um, uh, when there's noise around. Okay, yeah. so he needs silence. He needs peace, and uh, because he does not hear um, everything, yeah. sometimes you have to repeat um, yeah. like the question. And my sister-in-law. Uh, who is a teacher also, by the way, <clears throat> found as much information about this disorder as possible. She uh, uh, like um, gave it to the teachers of his, of her son and asked them to like pay more attention to what the, how they treat them. Okay, because she, he should not be um, asked questions orally. It, it all should be in in writing, okay? And there are teachers who, um, like, even if they did not know much about this disorder, they made some effort to, yeah. like, learn many things, to read the materials that she gave them, okay? And they, yeah, they treat him as they are supposed to treat. Yeah. Uh, and there are such uh, teachers who, I would say, believe like the other way around. They keep asking questions. Mm -hmm. They get nervous when he's not able to answer them because he does not understand. So it all depends on the people. But there are certain regulations in Poland, yes. Can I I ask, this is an unfair question, really. I mean, because it's almost as though you cannot know the answer to this. You say these teachers who are less willing to, to, to change their mm-hmm. ways, do they tend to be the more senior teachers? Mm, it, it, yeah, I might say that it looks like that. Mm. Uh, because um, maybe they... There are not always like the older teachers, mm. but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I would say that younger teachers are more willing to, yeah. uh, to learn a new thing, new yeah. things. They uh, maybe they think that there is a lot of, or there are a lot of years of of, of work ahead of them, and you know, uh, they should do something about um, yeah. their knowledge experience. But it helps them. Mm, yeah, mm. yeah, I could say that this is true. So let's let's assume 
um, it's recognized that in a class of what, how many kids in a class, about 30 children, something like that? Well, between 20 and 30, depends oh. on the school. So in a class of 25 children, something along those lines, let's say you have recognition that there's, I don't know, three, three dyslexic children. Mm -hmm. What then happens? Well, um, the, uh, how do you call those? Uh, like the form teacher? Yeah? yeah, yeah. So you have something like a form teacher, right? Yeah, form teacher, yeah. uh, such a person um, uh, is like obliged to inform all the teachers uh, of that child or that yeah. student that um, uh, they are diagnosed with or they have been diagnosed with dyslexia or something like that. And um, we have a meeting, mm -hmm. okay? And we um, we have to we have to read we have to uh, learn we call it an opinion of of this counseling center for students okay because they have to be diagnosed with specialists okay in a specific and, center yeah we have such centers in every town or city and, and, and are, these, are these are these assessments are they free or do you does yeah. somebody have to pay for them no 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 you don't have to pay for that Okay. And um, it um, usually it happens that the teachers like recognize that there might be a problem, mm -hmm. okay? That, that the child might suffer from such disorder, yep. and they ask parents to uh, to try to um, like get such an opinion, okay? So it's parents that have to go there with the child. We cannot force them, okay? Yeah. We can advise them to do such a thing, okay? So if we have such an opinion, we, um, we have to learn what the problem exactly is. And usually we have some regulations, uh, we have some advice like given to follow while the, 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 the process of, of teaching such a child. So we are obliged to treat such a child in um, a specific way and um, we uh, mustn't like, pay much attention to, for example, uh, I don't know, um, spelling mistakes. We uh, have to give them more time to write a test, okay? Mm -hmm. So such things. What is more, and sometimes um, it happens that maybe the child does not have many problems at school because of dyslexia, but um, during external exams, mm -hmm. they um, can like tick a box uh, on the paper that uh, saying that they are dyslexic. And the examiners checking such a paper mustn't uh, even uh, underline the mistakes, the, for example, the spelling mistakes. I'm, I'm the examiner. I've just returned from uh, another city mm -hmm. uh, when I was checking such exam papers. Mm -hmm. And we, we are not even allowed to underline such a mistake. Okay, so we don't pay any attention to those. Yeah. Okay, so these are the, the, the regulations that we have to follow. Who, who checks whether a child saying, I am dyslexic, is telling the truth? Uh, yeah, this, um, when you go to this counselling centre, mm -hmm. there are um, like um, psycholo psychological stuff, there is psychological stuff, that there are such people who um, are specialists, mm -hmm. trained specialists, to recognize such uh, disorders, such problems. And so, you know, um, this is an institution that, uh, that is to say, decide whether the child is dyslexic or not, yeah. okay? So it's not teachers uh, that say so, it's not parents, okay? I was just, there thinking, are the, I was just thinking for the exam, if I, as a child, want to want to have a um let's say a leg up in an exam and i say mm -hmm. right okay i'm dyslexic 
Does anybody check that? Uh, they are not allowed to tick such a box uh, on their own. Okay? Right. okay. We have a list of students, right. uh, of dyslexic students, and there is one teacher mm. who like goes around the class, the, the, the room, the, the exam room, mm. and ticks the boxes, right. which uh, does not give you like the certainty because, you know, after he or she like finishes the job, <laughs> a student may tick the box anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yet, if, um, if for example, but because our students, when they feel that they were not uh, like judged um, fairly, so they counted on more points and they did not get as m many points as they were expected, or expected mm. they can like um, write to the uh, the institutions like organizing such exams uh, and to ask um, uh, to be like shown the paper okay mm -hmm. because the, they can check whether they were uh, like treated fairly or not yeah. and then if um, for example they ticked the box uh, we teachers, other people in this institution, may check whether they like whether they've been the assessed. Post. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The the, pro the problem is, I mean, or not the problem. I mean, it's you know, it seems like a very fair system in Poland, actually. But one of the 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 difficulties, it seems, is that if you begin with one of these teachers who doesn't like to recognise dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Or you have parents who don't want to recognize that their child's dyslexia. It happens. And the chances of that child having an official assessment are low. But that child could still reasonably say, I'm dyslexic. Mm -hmm. And so, if you like, that child, would that child be allowed to put onto the, the exam paper, I'm dyslexic? Or do they need yeah. to have that official assessment? So they need to get through the teacher and then the parents, as it were. Those two barriers. Yeah first they they cannot they cannot say i'm dyslexic themselves yeah okay? yeah there's no it has to be officially yeah mm -hmm. yeah it has to yeah. be diagnosed yeah mm -hmm. and and uh, have you found that the the success rate the uh, this is maybe a, a terrible way of measuring things but the academic success rate for dyslexic students is it adequate or do you find that dyslexic students fall behind or are they supported really, really well in school? Oh, it depends on the student. Yeah. Some of them are really good students, really. Yeah. And some of them are not that good. Um, we have friends whose son is dyslexic and he's a very good student. We are waiting for his exam results now. Um, He's good at um, maths, physics, mm -hmm. uh, such subjects. Mm -hmm. He's not that good at f the, the Polish language. Um, yeah. He has problems with reading. He does not understand some sentences. That's his problem. But he's good at other subjects and you know, it's not a problem for him. In Poland, um, I'm showing my ignorance now. In Poland, how much teaching is done in English? Mm. We teach English in English, <laughs> okay, and for example, in my school, there is a class taught some other subjects in English. Yeah. We call such a class a bilingual class, yeah. Yeah. okay? There is a program for such students yeah. who have to, if they want to, to be in such a group, they have to take a test in English, mm -hmm. okay? And it depends on the level they are in or on. Um, uh, they may be in such a group. So, for example, in our school, maths, history, uh, IT is taught in English. Okay. But is, it's is not what? fully in English. Mm -hmm. I could so take maths some of in Polish as well if I, if I wanted to. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I may add something, hmm. um, because I'm a, I'm a teacher of the secondary school, we don't do much with the students um, concerning the dyslexia 
because um, it's not like um, we believe that it's not the age um, to do much if you don't if you if you know what I mean yeah but if you um, if a student is diagnosed with dyslexia uh, uh, at the age of I don't know five six and it happens mm. they are helped um, in the primary school they have additional classes okay mm -hmm. with the teachers mm -hmm. trained to do such classes and they um, for, for example they have um, uh, their lessons scheduled mm -hmm. uh, okay and then after the school they like have some additional classes only for themselves with some exercises to help them so it is changing yeah. and the younger generation coming up is getting more and yeah, more yeah appropriate so in, yeah in primary schools they are really taken care of i might say brilliant mm -hmm. yeah it's not that bad 